today I shall discuss how to calculate the FBC on rock, that is bedrock. IRC 1, IS 12070 clearly stated some definite equations to determine the SBC. For determination of SBC of soil, we basically required uniaxial compressive strength, which can be determined from laboratory test, and shear strength for rock, it is 50% of UCS, unit weight, and water absorption. Elastic modulus, that is stress strain relationship, tensile strength, which normally we prefer to conduct from Brazilian test procedure. It is assumed that width and length. Width is 6 meter, length is 8 meter. Poisson ratio that is also from laboratory test. It is a ratio of lateral and longitudinal strain. RQD it is from field record. There, there are specific guidelines of Indian standard which considered on the basis of more than 100 mm length pole. However, this can be clearly considered, analyzed, whether the joints are due to drilling pressure or drilling speed. If it is a fresh crack, then it should be considered as a continuous drop. Discontinuity spacing in Rakhma, there are some, there is some amount of fractures. There is certain distance, the discontinuities are there. And the, in between the discontinuity, in between the gaps of fractures, there is some soil thin, where it is. 0.1 that is 1 millimeter thickness and 30 centimeter discontinuity length, which is technically said as discontinuity spacing in quotes. Frictional coefficient is 0.7 for, for rock, it is 0.7. Safety factor from 6 to 9, although some quotes lesser safety factor suggested, but most of the, all over the global consideration in rough safety factor shall be double than of soil. Failure strain is 180 division, that is 1.8 millimeter. Correction factor R by B, we have to calculate it. An equivalent radius that is relating to width and B because we have to convert to a cylinder mass. Since we are conducting all the trace results are on cylindrical section, so we have to con we have to convert it to equivalent radius and depth of foundation. We are considering two. These are the derivatives for frictional coefficient. What should be the phi? Phi is 35 degree, and phi is 62.5, and 10 phi square is 3.6. Therefore, cohesion is coming out 1.170.13. In earlier conception, UCS value 
In those times it is called unconfined compressive strength. Now it is said as uniaxial compressive strength. Uniaxial, the one one ax, axis compression. So earlier conception is this uniaxial compact uniaxial complex compressive strength divided by a safety factor. It is straight coming the SBC. It is reference art manual this. It is mentioned here. Uh, under this, under next circumstances, it is required for shaking of RQD values. It is a reference American Society of Civil Engineering. This is the numbers it is given there. This is the equation. Equation is written here. And from this equation, we are getting 31.3. Because you see our uh, RQD is 27%. And we are conducting the test on a good specimen which is uh, longer than 10 centimeter, which is, which is, in fact, it is a hard job. But RQD is 27%. 27% means it is very poor job. So, from this equation it is coming 31.3. So, since it is less than earlier derivative, so we are considering it 31.3. Next, under there is UCS NJ. The NJ is a bearing capacity factor that depending upon the joints, that is discontinuity, discontinuity spacing and discontinuity the thickness and thickness of the soil field. So, using that equation, we can calculate the SBC. That SBC is coming this much again says safety factor of demand. So again it is coming out 46.96 and it is uh, greater than this one. So we are considering this one. Now you see Tarzaghi and Peck equation L by B is get better than one condition, it is coming this much one. That means straight this is converted by this into this, so it is coming 31, uh, 62.84 and uh, therefore we are considering this much. Another equation is NC and it is coming 1.59. So ultimately this is coming this one. 12.06. 12.06 is less than 31.3. So we have adopted 31.06. Now from shear failure criteria we have getting a safe load of 12.06 kg per cm square. We have to check the settlement. Settlement, the equation this based on elastic modulus and pressure, that is 12.06 and width. This is the width of the foundation, width of the foundation and elastic modulus and pressure. It is coming out. The equation is in 809, 809 and, and IS 13063 in that code also and 
I have 809 part 1 also, this equation is there. Same equation which is used for pre consolidated soil, and here also same equation. We should remember one thing this settlement, this settlement is directly proportional to width of the foundation and pressure, applied pressure. This means applied pressure is this one, this has been seen. These are directly proportional. So if we increase the pressure, it will be more. If we increase the weight, then also it will be more. So, and our permissible limit is 12 mm. So it is 1.3 mm is much less than the 12 mm. But in here, we cannot arithmetically derive the what will be the settlement against the permissible limit. There is no such provision in this code. In this code, only maximum limits is gotten. So another is during our during our UCS we have recorded some strain. That is from strain dial it is coming 1.8 millimeter. From 1.8, considering this 1.8 millimeter, we have converted to, with this equation, we have converted for this pressure, this, this pressure, and this uh, 1.8. So it is coming 0 0.033. Therefore, our immediate settlement is 0 0.09, which is very less effect on this total settlement of 1.3. So we are considering settlement as 1.3. I hope it is clear. The another thing we have to remember one thing: that it should not should not be this. It should not be. 3 MPA, IS 78 and IS 1904. We have to limit it below 3 MPA. So we should adopt this one only. This is I am rounded it and this is this one. Settlement is this. Another important thing is no overburden pressure has to be considered in this SBC analysis in rock and rock bed. What is derived from direct calculation it should be considered as it is because Overburden pressure, in case of overburden pressure, we, we have to backfill with, suppose of same rock bed, we have to make artificial rock between the foundation gaps. In case of soil, we can backfill with the same material and compact it to reduce the amount. But in rock, we cannot backfill with and compact it. We have to make artificial rock bed, which is a costly proportion, proposition. So we should not consider our body pressure in SBC analysis. Another important thing is there are very soft rock we encounter. That should be considered as a dense and hard soil. In case of fractured rock, rock bolting, rock bolting is for passport. Further, it is more important to provide the foundation at a sloping ground. Normally, what happens in the hilly station when we are providing, uh, say, in bridge, foundation or some other foundation that if 
we provide at the nearest to the slope, there may be chances of soil slides and soil slip. We should remember one thing, all natural slopes are stable unless it is disturbed. When we started excavation at a slope, after some time there will be slight started. I personally know several such slope failure. After completion of the foundation, in especially in the northeastern hilly region, in several locations there are slope failure. Because all these slopes are provided in such a way that is, there are some possibility of drain out fine particles who those are behaving like cementing materials that were washed out and let finally the jointed rock started moving. If possible, we should provide foundation at a distance one vertical to horizontal. But it is, most of the cases, it from lower elevation to upper elevation, especially in some hilly terrain in Bhutan or in northeastern regions, Sikkim, Arunachal, Nagaland, in all these places, what happened? Lower level to upper level, our foundation level height is about 30 meter, 40 meter, like that. And we cannot accommodate, accommodate foundation at a too, too height. If it is vertical is 1, horizontal is 2. So 60 meter beyond we have to provide it, there is no scope to provide. In such cases, the fractured rock may be treated to artificial hard rock mass to which taking the ritual of cement grouting for monolithic behavior. When cement is in injected, loose soil particles shall be moved out under pressure and the soil shall be behaved rock fractured rock shall be behaved like a monolithic hard rock mass. It is a better option. Or alternatively, in this type of formation, rock bolting is another alternative. Rock bolting for reference IS 14593-IS12070 is one three zero seven zero one three zero six three two nine one one IS eight double zero nine six four zero three and four five six and I IS seventy eight and IS seventy eight six. The rock thing basically the purpose of rock bolting number one to make a monolithic solid rock, monolithic solid rock, and to transmit the load directly to the below the ground. This is you see, this is foundation, and this is this is the rock bolting. First, it will. If you are use a perforated steel pipe, that's when you will be using cement ground under pressure, this ground shall be injected within this jointed rough mass. And that shall be behaving like a solid rock. Where RQD will be 100 percent, but excellent rock. It is excellent rock. So how to calculate? We require the length of the bolt. 
diameter of the bolt, length of the bolt. This is top and bottom arrows, and this is you know, and shear strength is this much. Shear strength is this much. The average initial strength is this much. This is the concrete reaction coefficient is 0.7. Safety factor is 9. Since we are considering it, our vertical compression, it is 6. We are adopting 6. Where it will be subject to up, uplift, we are considering it 9. Reduction factor of 0.5. Elastic modular of this mass and Poisson ratio is this mass. And our gout, grade of gout is M35. Stress in the permissible stress of gout is 234 kg per cm square. Permissible tensile stress is gout is 40 kg per cm square. These are all given in IS456. Permissible tensile, uh, tensile stress on, we are using AP415 steel, it is 230, they are given in the steel tables. Weight of bolt is this much. Submerged weight. So, our tensile strength of the embodied rock is 94.23. Now, we are calculating the diameter, this mass 30 mm bar diameter, this rod diameter. This area is coming, this mass. Bonding stress of grout is 17 kg, uplift load is this much kg, 121.34 ton, and concrete stress is this much kg, bar strength is this much kg, this much kg, and therefore our numbers of bar is coming 6. 6 numbers of bar, 30 mm diameter, considered sufficient. Now, bar area. Bar area is, for 30 mm is 60.8 square centimeter. 50% extra we are considering clear grout hole area is this much. Hence, 9 cm, 90 mm diagram out hole for 3 meter long bolt shape. So, if we make 15 cm hole, we can go straight for 6 numbers of 30 mm bar to any distance with a grout of 35 mm or above. Our safe loadal tension has been calculated considering our tensile strength, tensile strength of the rock mass. It is coming this much. I hope it will clear you our estimation of SBC on rock foundation. Important thing you please keep in your mind in sloping ground it is preferable to go for cement grouting for monolithic behavior of fractured rock to avoid slip and slide of fractured rock. Number three safety factor for Although both say it is 3, some say 4.5, some say 6 to 8, whatever it may be, for vertical loading, that is, for foundation design, it should not be less than 6. And for uplift, uplift, it should be 
not less than nine. Another important thing, what I experience personally visiting many places of Northeast and Bhutan, Nepal and Bangladesh, visiting many places where everywhere there are some different problems of soil and rock formation. Somewhere are sliding problems, somewhere are slope stability problems, somewhere there are another problem which never covers by any rock mechanics or soil mechanics or engineering practices. So it is very difficult for us to draw a specific conclusion on the basis of test results and codes and standard handbooks. So we must study such such failures, slope failures or some uh, landslide, typical landslide, this should be studied properly with the proper uh, intuitional judgment, if necessary some history also make helpful. I hope you should remember it. Another more one thing, all natural slopes are stable unless disturbed by human. So, we must keep our efforts for minimum disturbance at slope. I hope if you feel comfortable, please let me know. Or if you want anything more details, I can send my Excel sheet to you also. Please contact me at jcgogoi at the rate gmail.com. I tell you once again, my contact ID is jcgogoi at the rate gmail.com. Please have a nice day. Thanks to all.